So we're approaching the two cabins that we've dreamt of for decades and are coming into being in the next month and we'll have guests in them from mid-July onwards. And the idea of the cabins is to provide beautiful and comfortable accommodation for people who are coming to stay and get involved in the life of the woods. And here they are with our amazing team of volunteers and disillusioned architects and gifted craftspeople. Emily Charkin and her husband, Dan, have created a remarkable enterprise in their East Sussex woodland. So Wilderness Wood is a 60 acre working woodland. It's also the base for a vibrant mixed age community. Our goal here is to open up the experience of living and working in a wood to other people from cities, from places where they wouldn't normally get to have that kind of hands-on experience. Um, we wanna share the work and the fun. There's a, a core home team of two families that live there all the time and take care of the woods. A rolling cast of fantastic, creative young people who come and work for a few months a year. And then the cabins allowing families with children to come and be part of the life of the woods so that Wilderness Wood always has young people enjoying the woods and learning from the woods as an alternative to school. That's my vision. There is already a wonderful variety of wooden buildings at Wilderness Wood. But the two new cabins will be an especially useful addition. I see these cabins that are going to be done in a month as very much part of that community building that we do here because they're going to provide accommodation for people, families and older people to be able to stay comfortably in the woods and then get involved. They're not purely for tourism, they're for people who are coming to either help out or do a course. It sits on top of the house yeah. and you've got to carry that plane on into there. And Emily's husband Dan is the architect behind the Wilderness Wood vision. I'm an architect, trained as an architect and I ran a practice about 15 years in London. Uh, grandson of a timber merchant, great-grandson of a timber merchant. Maybe there was some DNA speaking to me. Dan's inspiration for the design of the cabins came from rural buildings he and Emily discovered in northwest Spain. So this is a kind of hybrid-y uh, idea. We pinched a lot of ideas from the Orio, which is a vernacular building in Asturias, which these magnificent uh, agricultural buildings on stilts. Asturias, they say, to live in Asturias you have to have one leg longer than the other because there's no flat ground anywhere. It's all mountains. And they've uh, evolved uh, this agricultural building. They have these massive balconies where they hang all their corn to dry in the wind, all under a huge roof overhang, big eaves. We've sort of pinched that building type and we've imposed some English framing well, they don't do it quite like this. I spoke to this lovely boy in Spain who makes them correctly and showed him my drawings and he was like, oh, no, no. Um, so we've kind of, we've fused a few cultures here. There's no concrete. That's a cast concrete staddle stone, but it's just sat there. There's no concrete in the ground, so the root, tree roots will grow back into the ground. Okay, welcome to cabin two, named Yaffle after the green woodpecker in old Sussex dialect. Uh, it's been a labour of love for about a year now and we have a month left to get it finished, so all hands on deck. Enter through the staircase made from one chestnut tree. Through the main entrance door, we have a double master bedroom out the back. We have the bathroom in the corner which has a walk-in shower and nice tiling details. If we go around the covered veranda and we can enter through our large portal sliding door front which will frame the view down the woods into the valley. As we come into this space we have 
our wood burning stove right in the center we've got our kitchen over in this corner and then we can go upstairs up the spiral staircase and on to the pièce de résistance the mezzanine for all the children to have all of their fun I'm Daryl and I've lived uh, Wilderness Woods for about nine months. I uh, moved here in September when we started these, these cabin builds. So yeah, I've been here through the whole process which has been really, really nice. Yeah, this, uh, this is one of the bits that I'm proudest of. Um, me and Will built this sort of uh, frame extension out on the, uh, the veranda um, at the beginning of the build and I'm really proud of it because it sort of demonstrates some really nice traditional timber framing. You've got a jowl post here with a teasel tenon and a tie beam between it. Uh, which is mortised and tenoned into it. And then on top of that, you've got another tenon where the eaves plate is mortised on. And there's a funny dovetailed fillet thing on top and there's braces and oak pegs everywhere. It's complicated. So a building all from wood, um, you, uh, you want to use uh, the most appropriate form of timber that, you, that, that the task demands, which varies depending on its position in the building. So the frame down below we were looking at earlier is massive, uh, selectively felled chestnut trees really, milled to uh, a workable size, known dimensions. Planks, chestnut planks, found pieces with branches where you want them uh, to make your brace sort of ready provided by nature. Douglas rafters, softwood growing straighter, more reliably a straight edge, and cedar shingles on the roof. And all those trees grow here. This is our stewardship of the woods. We're creating timber structures made with wood from the woods. In a hundred years time, maybe it's time for the woods to just be a woods again with no people in it at all. And that would be okay too. Yeah.